I'm Brad King, and this is Stories in Steel. On this episode of Stories in Steel, we sit down and have a discussion with Dave and Greg Engel. We find out how they started, what they've accomplished in their careers, and how they became known as the fathers of Hot Rod Strollers. Sitting here with the famous, the infamous Engel Brothers. Infamous. Yes. Infamous. More, more than famous. famous. <laughs> more than famous. In in our top secret, this is a seriously top secret location. Yeah. And I am I am honored to be part of this. And you know, we'll be mom and where we are. And we're just going to say we're somewhere in Southern California. That's it. That's all I'm going to get some yeah. uh, get some mail. So uh, let's talk about you guys. Um, well, I'm a Scorpio. Uh, <laughs> what are your likes and dislikes? Long walks on the beach. <laughs> Drinks with umbrellas. Yeah. And nice. <laughs> White sandy beaches. Pina <laughs> coladas and walking in the rain. Perfect. Um, so you guys been you guys been you're gearheads. You guys are complete nuts like myself and anybody else that kind of watches what we have going on here. So. What uh, what what got you guys going? I mean, you're obviously the older one. Obviously, look at you. You're the you're the old man of the bunch. Man, that way, hurts. Way younger man. than you are. So I'm supposed to what, respect my elders here. Uh, so right? Oh well, no, I'm way older. I'm way greater than old, no one yes. So what what got you going? What what was the whole? Thing uh, here? We grew up around cars our whole entire lives, going to car shows. You know, thank our dad for that. I mean, he you know he was a firefighter, and you know he would just you know take us to shows. We had to work on cars. We had to help fix our cars. You know, fix. Mom and Dad's car back in the day. Um, Grandpa, you know, he was an original drag racer. Uh, he was one of the original road kings, actually. Wow. Uh, so he, he uh, yeah, he was like around the, one of the first uh, twelve with uh, Prudhomme and, and Ivo and, and all them, all those guys up there in Burbank. And uh, yeah, and there's endless stories about you know the drag racing folklore of. You know, so you were born into this. There was no yeah, escaping. Yeah, there's no, yeah, okay. there, we really didn't have an option whether it be our our career path or just our hobby. But obviously, right. we turned our hobbies into our, into our careers, and here we are. That's that's awesome. So you the same same thing. You just did you follow what he was doing? I mean, he was the older one, uh, so pretty much. I mean, uh, obviously being around cars and stuff, going up to grandpa's, he was always restoring Model A's at that time. He was out of drag racing and stuff. Um, so just going up there over the weekends, we'd just hang out in the garage and just, I don't know, just been around it our entire life. So it's like, you don't really think about it cause we were just born into it basically. So, um, like you said, he was one of the early drag racers and I believe the story was he was supposed to be one of the early guys that started using chromoly in his chassis and stuff like that. And it was pretty interesting uh, hearing some of the backstories about him and some of the chassis that he had built. Actually, we just had a, a, a guy reach out to us uh, recently, last week, I believe, mm -hmm. sent us a message on, on Facebook saying like, hey, I was doing some research about this dragster that Kent Baber had, and it was at the 66 March meet. Mm -hmm. And in researching the car, he ended up finding out that our grandpa actually built the chassis for it and stuff. So, which I actually didn't even know. I, I didn't. I was unaware that he had built other chassis. So that was kind of a wow. little new tidbit that we didn't even know about. So, um, but yeah, growing up, our first cars where he had his '55 Olds. I had my '65 Chevelle wagon, and you know, we just worked on them and started playing with them as all kids do, and. Uh, it just became part of life and then he had a shop and so he was fabricating before i was and i just kind of well so even okay so even before that before you guys were got the shop going so I, i'm sure you guys rode bicycles and your big wheels and play those stuff did you guys yeah B bmx so, bmx that's, 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 like that's always the, that's, the common, that is, common denominator that is the that common, is the, we didn't have many trucks though okay. unfortunately you know we're, there's still time for that but bmx is yeah. definitely a car guy yeah. thing there is yeah, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't yeah. do bugs, and we didn't do mini trucks. But the, uh, that between that and BMX, those are the three common common yeah. threads for all hot rodders. But yeah, we were definitely we, we were into BMX. We weren't, you know, super nuts about it, but I mean, we definitely you know rode around yeah. our bikes, yeah. and, rode around and went down to sheep hills and stuff like you know, that. GT and, performers. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So you guys go? Were you? Were, was there hot rodder guys around the neighborhoods? I mean, was there was there anything around where you guys? Wanted to go hang out uh, and go see. I mean, it was car related. I mean, our, besides besides what Dad was doing, was there right. anything? Our neighbor, he, he moved in probably when we were 
I don't know. Probably 10, 11. 10, yeah, 10, 11, something like that. He was he was a car guy, and he went through a number of different cars. He had a 65 Impala, 65 Chevelle, big block car. The thing was really gorgeous yeah, car. Class winner for Super Chevy. We helped build the car from the ground up. Well, obviously, you guys both have a little bit of mechanical ability. I mean, did you guys figure that out at a young age? Or, no, I mean, no fear? Or mom and mom and mom yelled at you for taking things apart and breaking things? Or Basically, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think the first story that I can recall is, I think I was probably about nine, year old, nine years old or something like that, and the, the blender had broken, and they're like, oh, we're just going to throw it. I'm like, oh, it's pulled apart, whatever. And, you know, I knew how to use tools and, you know, screwdrivers and stuff like that. And so I was Phillips had screwdriver, pulled the whole thing apart. No idea what the heck I did, but somehow I got to work. I, no, still <laughs> to this day, I have no did. idea what the heck That's I did. Awesome. I literally just pulled it apart and then like kind of looked didn't at catch it. on fire. Put it, put it back together. Yeah, I think it kept on fire. It didn't, you know, and it, and it worked after that. I'm like, huh, this is kind of weird. So I, I remember actually doing it. So like I said, uh, it was definitely, a, it was one of those just weird, just dumb luck things, but I don't know, maybe it's just mechanical and, you know, curiosity, I think. Mm -hmm. I, so I tell people it's like the having curiosity about things is like one of the main like, you know, it's like the heart of kind of like doing what we do. You know, it's like, hmm, I think I could do that. You know, I'm pretty sure I could take that on, you know. And Well, it's funny, like you guys as, as brothers, I mean, I know brothers on both sides. My brother and I, we were a lot alike in some areas, but like he wasn't uh, he, he wasn't. He, he bought and sold a lot of cars. He turned cars, like, but he wasn't like the wrench guy, always out messing with them and working on stuff. You mm -hmm. know, I'd help him on different things. When he could do it, it just wasn't his thing. He was just good at buying, selling cars. He had a gift. He, he made money turning cars. Right. But you guys both are, you guys are both car guys, but you're both pretty good at wrenching and mechanical-wise. You know, you both fabricate, and that's that's not a common thing with brothers yeah, to go and, the same direction. And again, for us, it was kind of a, I'd say we were born into it, but it was kind of more like a you know trial by fire type of thing. It's like, well, we were always around you know grandpa and you know around the Model A, so we we're always you know tinkering with something. Dad has always tinkered with everything, um, you know, willing to take on any project. Like, well, I don't know, we can't really afford to have someone else do it, so it was like just try doing it yourself, and you know we'll just figure out a way to do it. Whether you know, and then hopefully the end result is is good, you know. And, so like even you know then we you know in high school we got into building you know radial fire wagons and uh, you know didn't know how to weld or anything. Dad could you know he could oxy settling weld a little bit, so we were able to at least stick some metal together or braze right. it together or whatever. But uh, you know we go to the shows. You know we always went to the Labor Day show, you know, Orange County Cruise, and uh, you know the, they always had you know the radial fire wagon show there. They had all sorts of you know lifted lower ones, you know hot rod ones, all that type of stuff. I'm like, well, we want to be part of that. So Dad's like, yeah, let's just do it. Let's just you know get a bucket and you know. And so we started you know cutting those things up. So I started with doing the, doing a, a scooter. I stretched it with a go kart tire on the back. Um, you know, built like a top fuel wing on the thing, put real short handlebars on the thing, made it as impractical as like totally useless, absolutely useless. <laughs> but it looked really freaking cool because even in junior high, you know, we were like six foot tall and now we have scooters that are like, you know, about two and a half feet tall. It's like, well, uh, I guess I didn't want to ride anymore, but it looks cool and we get trophies with That's it. Awesome. So. So were you painting painting those all up like spray can stuff, or what were you doing? Uh, some stuff we spray. We, uh, stuff. we would do like a little bit of body work, but I, we did develop a relationship with like you know guys like Steve Van Diemen. So that's how we actually met. You know, Steve was through doing like the scooters and the wagons and stuff like that. So you guys were showing up with with very cool, crazy. They right. Look, yeah. They look good and they were dumb. Yeah. So exactly. Perfect. Yeah. And so you know, even before that, if we, you know, like our BMX bikes, you know, we you know spray can it or or uh, or powder coat them. You know, like my 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 GT is all I still have it. It's all powder coated. I pulled all the stuff off that everybody wants nowadays, and it's worth a lot of money. But I'm like, well, mine's still cool. It's like one of my first projects I ever did with it. So I don't know. That's cool. So it doesn't have like the fold down GT ac accurate, you know, pegs and all that stuff. But yeah, it's like all the hot riders come back and they're like, ah, we don't need fenders and crap. We throw all that stuff in the garbage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you <laughs> don't need any of that. Yeah, exactly. Like, that stuff worth a lot of money, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> So your your car, I, I know you're when I first met you, you're going, yeah, my car was on the cover of Hot Rod magazine. It's like, wait, which one was that one? So the one with the the yeah. girls making a bunch of spark work, you know, she's dressed completely inappropriately for what she's supposed to be doing. <laughs> it's like, ow, been there, done that, ow, don't do that on purpose. Yeah. So yeah. that that was actually that was the second time that it was on the cover of Hot Rod. So I don't know how many cars were actually on the cover multiple times, but mine was on the cover twice. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So mine was in ninety, early ninety nine was the first cover shot it was a fold-out cover too so it showed like the cover you know the top down 
of a uh, shot of my car and then another car that's uh, another a 56 Chevy that Steve also flamed. So he flamed my Oldsmobile. That was that was my segue was that, you know, he painted our wagons on my scooter and we'd, we'd pull up and I'd drive around my 55 Oldsmobile just all flat black, you know, just, you know, already, already rebuilt motor and stuff like that. But I couldn't afford a paint job at all. So just had a DP90 and it's like, you gotta let me paint your car. I'm like, there's, I'm, I'm in high school. Uh, no, so, so this you, is my senior year of high school. Did you help him out? I mean, like yeah. taking stuff out. So yeah, exactly. Like, hey, I'll so help that you was, if you the, me. Yeah, that- so that was the relationship that we developed, you know? So I did, you know, I would work for him and then he ended up painting my car and it was like the third vehicle, uh, vehicle I think he ever flamed. Cause it, it, it was like a looking for a canvas. Like he needs something. Looking right, yeah, car. totally. Like, I don't yeah. have money, you don't understand. I need the canvas. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously, he had already painted like the two prior vehicles, and uh, they're just obviously he's just amazing at doing flame jobs, and uh, so he's, I'm like, well, I'd be dumb to say no. I mean, yeah, but I'm like, I want to paint it, you know. At the time, I want to paint it like a two tone green. It's like, no, no, we need to do the flat black, and then you do the gloss flames on it. I'm like, really? Okay, that's all right. Well, I'll, I'll trust you, you know. But it's it's again, I I tell people all the time, like you know, you go to a painter like you. Tell them generally what you want and then just say, all right, you know, you give me, you know, what your vision is for it. And these are kind of the colors that I like and then just set them free. And that's when you end up with the best work, you know, with any artist, you know, it's like you go to them because of their skill set and their past and what they're able, you know, capable of doing. And but you don't try and hold their hand while they're doing it because then it's pointless because then they're not doing it, you know. So right. I just like, yeah, just do it make it really cool and let's let's have at it, you know, and it. It grew into this monster that you, I couldn't, I would have ever imagined that you know took on such a personality and such a following. I mean, you know, I mean the the, vehicle, the car didn't even have an interior. You know, I mean, I should be saying that, but it didn't even have an interior. And when it was shot for the cover of the magazine, put a sheet over the over the seat because they just wanted a, the, you know, the 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 car in there so bad. And then, like I think, two months later, they didn't even have a feature inside of it. So like the two months later, they had the feature of the car. You know, and so we did a full full on you know photo shoot of the thing and and again it was like i was just out of high school and like i knew the car before i met you yeah man. exactly I that's a lot of I, dro- I drove the thing you know from you know after high school you know through junior college and college you know and i drove it everywhere i mean in rain or shine you know i drove it to over to you know orange coast college and then over to uh, over to a uh, university of laverne and uh you know all everywhere everybody knew that car but it you know, obviously you kept keep you know tinkering it with it or whatever right and uh yeah so you become as you go, you you know become friends with the, the editors of the magazines, and maybe it's you know maybe it's cheating or whatever. But you know, and then Mike Finnegan had contacted me you know a number of years later when the car was like apart, and I was basically in the process of redoing it. It's like I need a project car, you know, I need it like right now. I'm like, okay, like yeah, whatever project car that I was working on, you know, it backed out, and I need a cover sheet right like right now. I'm like, okay, I mean, I guess I can put my car back together. I guess it's like, all right, well, I'll be at your shop tomorrow. I'm like. I haven't touched my car in like five years. <laughs> like, you want me to do what? <laughs> so I'm like, all right. You didn't so sleep I just, that night. No, I just <laughs> found all the pieces and like started putting the front end and bumpers back on and everything, and and uh, and then brought it to the shop. And he's like, I'll be in your shop at ten o'clock in the morning. I'm like, okay. Like, I guess I got to find a trailer. I, mean, I don't think it, at the time. I don't think it even had a motor in it at the time. So amongst your uh, amongst your magazine, different projects you've been in, or is there any that are uh, that really stand out? Obviously, in your hands and a bunch of little crazy things yeah i'd say i'd say the uh, the eldorado for for joe ray of lowrider magazine was probably like you know probably one of the highest i mean that one, the 55 you know gasser was you know incredible for you know hot rod but you know being able to like really cut loose creatively and just get really artistic you know with, with a lowrider and you know design all sorts of like crazy sheet metal for the thing and it would definitely be the uh the eldorado that's pretty cool yeah so we you know, we, we developed a relationship with, with Joe Ray and Saul Vargas from, from Lowrider Magazine. We started doing a lot of tech article build-up stuff, you know, so we we basically would do sheet metal work or fab or do like the, you know, the rear framework for the thing, you know. And, and you and, documented uh, it all. And we yeah, documented it all, yeah. We'd, so, cool. Yeah, so we would, you know, we're, we're also magazine, ed- you know, nice. we're tech ed- editors as well, you know, so. Not just a pretty face. Yeah, we got some pretty famous hands. Yeah, also. yeah. So nice. that's hand, the uh, very hand man, man that's, white. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the ongoing joke when you're doing tech articles. Like you're gonna have the most famous hands, and then that's about it. Your name will be in there sometimes, but so if you if you really want to be famous, you like tattoo your name on your hands, you know, because that's all you're gonna see. He just does his now. nails and cuticles and yeah. keeps them all soft, yeah, so exactly. it's all good. It's- 
Um, so you get the best hands in the fabrication business. Oh, it's great angle by far. Yeah, yeah. I'm fancy like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> Joe, so Joe Ray has been around, you know, low riding for decades. You know, he's you know, for all intents and purposes, he's the godfather of, of you know, low riding. You know, everybody knows him. He's you know, head of Low Rider magazine and whatnot. So. Um, he has, you know, a number of other, you know, lowriders that were, you know, lowrider of the year um, vehicles, you know, from you know years past, you know, which were just like really far out there, and uh, so he he came to us with uh, with this '67 uh, Eldorado um, Cadillac, and just like, you know, this is kind of what we've done, you know, what do you think, you know, what you know, can we can you know, can we take it, you know, even further than this, and so yeah, it just. It just snowballed into, I mean, what I call it, you know, it's basically turned into one of our Sistine chapels just because of all the, you know, crazy work that we had to do to the thing, which had no boundaries, you know, whereas Hot Rods, you know, you're kind of bound by some rules, more or less, you know, and, but with Lowriders, like, you, you know, you just go for it and you just make it really freaking cool. And uh, so we got to do this one, you know, as it build it as if it was like, you know, a concept car, you know, just real spacey and really far out there, you know, it was chop top. You know those Eldorados, they're front wheel drive, and so they, someone had already uh, done a, fr a different front, like an '80s front uh, suspension clip for the thing, and uh, so we had to do like the whole rear frame, you know, kick ups and everything, do a rear end under, do a do a custom made four link and all that stuff. It's all in hydraulics. Okay. Uh, but yeah, this was like over years of of just you know working on this thing, you know, basically wherever that we could. You know, we did. You know, suicide doors. We you know did a whole custom sheet metal dashboard for the thing in center console, and had like a floating armrest that just sits there and hovers for about two feet. You know, from all the way from the back of the car, you know, to to the front. But you know, you can stand on the thing. You know, it's all made out of metal. And it's framed out and it's sheet metal and it has a waterfall and you know, so there's just like so much work in that thing. Uh, but again, we weren't bound by any rules, and so I mean. You know, in the end, that, that car was, you know, very well accepted, you know, when, when, it, when it got debuted at SEMA. And, uh, you know, just everything about that car is just like it's, it has something, you know, that we touched something on that car, you know, just like everything with the fabrication and, and all that stuff. And Joe had obviously had, you know, tons of great ideas as well, you know, as far as, you know, bouncing ideas with him. So all these things are definitely different collaborations. Um, so what about you? What do you got going on right now? Life's been pretty busy lately um, with my daughter around and stuff and uh i haven't really been able to work a whole lot on my own projects unfortunately but hopefully i'll i'll get my wagon back on the road here after sitting for the last two three years oh you're gonna get back on the wagon <laughs> work on that but it's a 65 chevelle wagon and um it's got a 383 it's airbagged and right now it's on 20s which i want to get rid of those i Came I came across those when I was younger, and I ended up getting them for free in a trade deal. I'm like, ah, something different. And now I look at it like, oh, those are terrible. <laughs> so uh, I need I need to change those up and go with something a little bit more uh, timeless. But I got kind of wrapped up in swapping out to an EFI system on my cars and as we know when you start changing some one thing it snowballs out of control and you got to oh change God. this and change that and you're like oh you know what i might address this because like, you know i did this when i was younger and it's kind of haggard so yeah it's 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 not so close as to being a driver if you could work on it if you didn't get interrupted by by you know the family if, life and the kids and all if that. i could work on it straight i could probably have it done and driving I don't know, a few weeks, something like that. Not that long, but it's just trying to pick at it here and there an hour or so whenever you can. And that's about it. But I mean, little progress is better than none. So right. I take what I can, but it'll get there someday, maybe. <laughs> so what about you? What do you got going on now? Now? Um, well, we just did a pedal car for the Grand National Roadster Show. Nice. So well, that'll be a... It'll be a charity auction. Uh, we did that for uh, for those guys, and so it's cool to be able to part be, be part of that. Be be selected there was a for bunch it. Of, there was a bunch of yeah, there was a bunch of good ones. I was I was asked to do it, but I knew I didn't have yeah the time. I'm like, hey, Brad, you wanna? Yeah, yeah you yeah, know, you, got, you got time. I, I got I got asked about it. It's like, oh, when am I gonna do this? Well, now that we kind of know what we're up against, we're like, I don't know. You know, talking to you know talking to Kevin Doyle, I'm like. 
I don't know. Maybe we could do another one for next year. I mean, I'll plan a little bit, you know, more in advance, and you know, it's a it's a great idea, and they're all so. Cool. Oh no, they're all amazing, so, of yeah, course. Kevin, you know, Kevin was great to put that whole thing. Yeah, together, absolutely. It's it's it's, it's really cool. Yeah, I mean, Doug and and uh, you know Pete Santini did one too. There. Yeah, they're they're just incredible. It's just like but see, it's what we were talking about earlier. It's like you know, right place, right time. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's the, more networking. You right. Know? Well, how did how did you get to be this? Well, I met this guy when I was doing this, and we just kind of became friends i didn't know he was going to go down this path and i was right. gonna go the, you know and it just kind of worked out that way yeah and i mean not to just keep rambling but yeah I, you know we have people ask us all the time like how'd you how'd you get into doing what you did did you go to school for it i'm like no i went to school for computer science in college <laughs> yeah, i went to school for college what a arts. waste of an education <laughs> yeah it's a it, perfect example of a college education gone bad I mean, right seriously. yeah exactly <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> at least I didn't pay for my four year four year degree, but I went to culinary school, so that's nice. my background. <laughs> so, hospitality management, all that stuff. So you got tacos figured out. Culinary you? baking, really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, I went to school for uh, management information systems and computer science. Sounds super fancy, doesn't it? Does it? Sound <laughs> fancy. it helps me take well now. <laughs> <laughs> culinary school and you're a, a but, fabricator that's perfect but yeah. I, t I tell people all the time like if you want to get into this this type of stuff the trick is like just have a good personality and network and make friends you know with, with you know people that you look up to you know yeah. don't be afraid to go up there and just talk to some of these guys that you think are big names in the business because guess what they're just regular dudes yeah it does it not a big deal. Most car guys are pretty casual. Car guys are car guys. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We want, we want to talk cars. It yeah, exactly. We want exactly. To talk about and it's cars. like, you know, you, you have to have that drive. You obviously have a mechanical aptitude just to get your foot in the door, obviously. And you, you know, I, I learned how to weld, you know, after college. So I was in my, you know, mid, mid to late 20s. And, uh, you know, I just started working a shop and you just like, well, I want to glue these two pieces of metal together. It's like, well, you got to make sure it's a good fit up. And, you know, then you just, here's how you weld. And, and there you have it. You know, you basically just you ask intelligent questions and you just shut up. That's it. You just have to just have to, you know, just learn through osmosis. And I mean, you just you screw stuff off all the time. And we we still do. You know, that's how you no, that's you how you learn. No, 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 you people, never people do. ask me. You, you no, mess you, up. I'm perfection. <laughs> never. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> don't like don't mind the scrap pile yeah. over here. Yeah, never, no, 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 no. Tell people that's the best part about doing you know doing metalworking is that like you could start over. It's like whereas you have like if you have a woodworker you have like some super rare piece of wood like well you have one shot at that yeah. metal is just like I don't like it. Drag it on. Yeah, I'll yeah, just get another piece out of scrap pile and stick it on there and you know just keep working it working until it can't be worked anymore. Like ah, I don't like that either. Cut it off and start over. So do you guys work on the same the same kind of projects, or are you have you guys gone different directions with with what you do? Um, I mean, I guess it would technically be still the same kind of things, I guess. Um, I mean, we both work on cars. He, uh, you know, he gets to have a little bit more like low rider influence in some of the cars out here um, in California. But now that I'm in in Denver, I've been working for just one guy in his own personal collection. So we just basically just build cars for him. So, I mean, I'm kind of pitching to hold into whatever he wants to do, but I still like tinkering and building just all sorts of off the wall stuff. So I'm currently building like a little, well, I guess it's kind of a pole wagon for my uh, one year old daughter that looks just like a little streamliner, full aluminum chassis, aluminum body um and soapbox derby wheels on it and those are the things that really kind of get me going because you know the day in day out like we were talking about earlier people saying like oh it's so great that you get to do what you love no it's not it's it's just work it's work it, that's all it is <laughs> doesn't matter what you do it's work so it's nice to be able to do something on your own and just kind of just have fun with it so that's well, really what I enjoy. Okay, so but. let's talk about your your little pull wagon. So this is something that, you know, again before I met you guys, I, I knew who you guys were. I just didn't know who you guys were. When you introduced <laughs> is your little is your little pull wagon stroller little creations that you guys have made, and a lot of people know them. They just don't know who you guys. Yeah, are. those kind of take took on a whole life of their own. It was it originally started as a project for our for our nephew. And it just snowballed out of control, and now we are the oh. stroller guys. Oh, I love yeah, we're, 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 we're the world famous stroller builder. Like, yeah. Holy crap, this is great! I, I didn't yeah. know you, but 
oh, I knew, I knew your project. Yeah. yeah. yeah our, our buddy John Jackson still inter- introduces us as, yeah, yeah, they're, they're the world famous stroller builders. I'm like, oh, okay. and everybody knows they go, oh, yeah. uh, I didn't yeah, exactly. That, but I know it does strike a chord. I'm like, okay, well, I guess you kind of just have to grow to accept it, you know. But yeah, I mean, uh, we, we were really lucked out when we were building those things, and uh, D- I think David originally made friends with uh, one of the guys over at Miller Foundry here in Santa Ana. Um, before they closed down, but they had originally b- done all the stuff for um, for Hillborn. They had all the patterns and stuff uh, since yeah. day one. Yeah, all the injection, and, all the uh, manifolds, all that stuff. And yeah, it was little tiny, you know, little small foundry. But yeah, you see all the all the original like just amazingly sculpted wood, you know, bucks and everything for the molds and everything for the for like a four part, you know, or like a you know stack injection and all right. the stuff. And it's just yeah. The but, thing, the paths that you cross so with what, people. What did, yeah, you, but, what did you do with them? What was but, the, so he ended up. Well, you made the front. At, you made the dr- the front axle. Yeah, for the straight it. axle. So it's a dr- yeah. you know, so it's a drilled you know straight axle. I had that. I had that all cast, and then we made up ladder bars. And you know, again, just kind of out of necessity because we'd we'd make ladder bars and made them all girder style. We have like you know two days of fabrication in these silly little ladder bars on on the thing. You know, like. We should probably have these things cast. Like that'd be like way faster and way cheaper because this is so much effort, you know. So, right. but yeah. you know, you do that, and then you know, I had um, I had a, uh, a spindle mount Halibrand, you know, printed up, you know, three D printed, you know, it's basically eight inch by you know by about an inch and a quarter, basically, it just made like little you know pizza slicers, and uh, so we had started having those things cast, and like I have people ask me all the time about those things. I'm like, so is that what you made the mold out of it? Yeah, yeah, printed, yeah. Made the mold. exactly. I made the mold for it. So luckily they were able, able to do like loose mold. Um, it's loose mold stuff is where you take in a, a part basically and say, you know, pack the sander out and make, the, you know, okay. stick, put the box together, make it so you don't actually ha- actually have to have like a plate made up where you have the side A and side B and then, you know, that's, um, yeah, it was just, it was, it was a nice relationship to have because a lot of foundries, they want, they want run work. Doing the strollers and wagons and stuff like that, it's like, it's therapy, you know, it really is because you're taking all your hot rod knowledge and like sticking it in something little that you get to like turn and burn in like, you know, in a short while and then have something that's just like, oh my gosh. And you get just as much, if not more notoriety for a little, you know, kitty toy as you do for, you know, these hundred thousand million dollar cars, you know, and when we took, when we took the, the blue 55 stroller um, to SEMA, it was in the PPG booth hanging up. And again, it's just another Forrest Gump story. It's like, well, you know, at the time, you know, Danny D, he, you know, rest his soul, he uh, he did the paint and body on the thing and just really gave, you know, these all, all of our, you know, all of our stroller just like an amazing personality per each one, you know, which everybody just like really gravitated towards. And so at the time, you know, PPG is like, well, we need, you know, some boost stuff and we're going to be doing strollers. And so, you know, Danny got us hooked up with that. And uh, so we got to display it and everybody just went nuts over the thing. And that's actually how we met John Jackson, actually, yeah. because he had pulled it off the wall and put it down on the ground, which I mean, as well as like, why are you touching our stuff? We saw his like pictures, you know, professional pictures of the thing. Like it's on the ground. It was up on the wall. And we left there. It's like, who why took it down? who could took it down? Exactly. But obviously we knew John's work. So how how is this back to the stroller stuff? How has this worked since you moved away? You left. Yeah, you left I us. Know. I know. <laughs> So how, are you are you guys still doing things together? Is it you come out and do things, or is it just kind of you're on that side and he's on this side? Or? No, I mean it's it's kind of separate now. Um, but our friend Joel out in out in Utah at over Overkill Racing and Chassis, he wants to bring us both in and work on some of the projects there in, in Salt Lake, which is kind of nice because it's almost kind of a happy medium between the two of us. Um, but it would be it would be nice to be able to get back together and do some work and work on a, work on a project together because a lot of it's just you know we talk over the phone so we know exactly what everybody is doing day to day and what we're messing around with it. but you know hands on projects it's been a while so yeah we bounce a lot of ideas like pretty much daily you know between our you know a few you know group of friends basically just with. You know, projects that we're working on, things that we just like, oh, look, check this out. This is how I would do it, you know, type of thing. And so it's like you're always getting input from like each other, you know, and from your friends or whatever. So it's like, you know, even, you know, even the latest, you know, little pedal car, it's like, no, he didn't actually get to touch it. But at the same time, I got to, you know, I was I was picking his brain like, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? We could do this, okay. this, and this, so you know, so it's like, involved, it just, yeah, it's still it's, it's still a collaboration, you know, which I mean, I think I think creatively and mentally is just as important as physically doing it, you know, so 
it's like it, it, it does count for a lot having a second set of eyes on it. it's like huh i'm kind of stuck here so what do you think you know how should we do you know how should we do this or whatever you know so it's like you're you know you're always connected that's that's just the bottom line you know now you're now you're at the bottom of the barrel talking to me on a on a on a channel that really is not a lot of people watch. Oh come on! You guys, come you guys on. have been on TV. You guys have been mainstream, and now you're kind of slumming, hanging out with me. <laughs> but uh, the Diesel Brothers show, you were, you were part of that. How did how did that come about? How did you how did you involved um, that? So we got called in once again from our friend Joel um, from Overkill Racing and Chassis. He was working out there with uh, Sparks Motors for the Diesel Brothers TV show. And they had a C10 build that had been kind of backburned for a while. And he had built the chassis for it, full tube chassis. And he's like, well, it's basically a shell of a cab, all aftermarket paneling beyond that. And that is it. We don't really have anything else, but we need to slam this thing out because they need to finish it up for the finale, basically. So he called in basically people from all across the US, some from the East Coast who brought us out and two other two other guys from California. And uh, yeah, just he threw together some all star team of guys that just we hammered on that thing for about seven weeks um, straight from and they were 12 to 16 hour days, something like that. And uh, yeah, like I said, there's an empty shell of a chassis no floor, no firewall, no bed, no nothing. And took it from that all the way to done driving, painted, finished vehicle. And uh, it was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of hard work, but it was amazing to work with the, with the guys that we got to. And they were amazingly talented. We all learned a lot from each other. It was really, really neat experience. So I'd never done anything like that before in my life, so. I mean, the TV show was, you know, secondary. That just happened to be going it's on. Fun working. But it's fun working with, we get a little bit of chemistry going on and everybody kind of does their thing. Right. That's right. fun. That yeah. is fun. Exactly. Because you never know, like when you're throwing together a bunch of people together, you don't know if personalities are going to mesh and stuff like that. And we just yeah. got really lucky. Yeah. Like all of us, basically, we knew each other on Instagram and, and like, you know, we'd seen each other in passing and, uh. So yeah, so you never know, like, am I kind of work with this guy? Is he kind of have the same vision or whatever? But you just accept that everybody else has are their- we, has Are their we gonna go to blows? We're gonna throw tools in each right, other? Exactly. Or no, yeah. because that's fake. Yeah. <laughs> Will there be yelling involved? Oh. I don't know. Not unless they want us to, I, I don't know. But we don't need, we don't need fake <laughs> creative drama. Get, I, yeah. always, I, always hated, I always hated that about the TV stuff, because they make car guys look like freaking idiots. Yeah. I mean, we're, we are stupid. It's not like we don't yeah, know we, this about ourselves. Yeah, we don't need <laughs> help doing that. We don't know how to waste yeah. money on really dumb things. We already know this about ourselves. Yeah. But I can, we can hate each other. We're just not going to hang out after work. We're not going to go drink a beer. We're not going right. to do anything. We're, but we're still going to work. we got to finish this project. Right, you know, exactly. I mean, that's okay, we'll do this and we go on our way. There's no, there's no yelling and screaming. Yeah, yeah there, there was no that. chairs thrown or yeah. anything no like that. that. <laughs> stuff we got to get done. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a job. At the end of the day, it's like you have, a, so, you have one common goal. So when you guys were doing that, were they, were they throwing any... any they want some drama going on while you guys were doing no, it? No, believe it or not, they, they were on. actually really, really good about all that stuff. And they, they kind of knew generally how the industry kind of worked, believe it or not. They actually kind of did get it and they knew um, what they were trying to get out of everybody as far as footage and stuff like that. But it was no created drama. It was really, really That's awesome. nice. That's yeah. awesome. You guys yeah. just get to do your job. Yeah. Exactly. You work. You get up every morning and go to work. Yeah, That's it wasn't awesome. a whole lot of like, stop, everybody quiet. We need to shoot this. Or you guys can do nothing right now. Right. And there wasn't a whole lot of that at all. Mm -hmm. So it, it was pretty much just put your head down and go to work. Uh, when you guys when you guys first started, um, you, I know you guys worked on the Diesel Brothers project together. How many other projects have you like taken on together? Have you done something where let's do this together and see what we can do with it? So our, I would say our first complete project together from start to finish would have been a, a 55 Chevy Gasser um, that we got to do. It came to us as a shell on a stock chassis and that was it. So. You know, I got pictures of him with the saws all hacking off the front, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hacking off the front end. Yeah, and we're, we were basically put in charge of, uh, you know, basically kind of designing most of it and doing all the all the metal fab on the thing, you know, and and I mean, just so much of basically just building the car. Yeah, we have an amazing uh, customer that basically said, "This is kind of you know the look I want to go for," and go. 
So it let us basically fill in all the blanks in between and all the day-to-day operation and we got to just do whatever we wanted. So that was really nice to have a customer that basically trusted us to run free with, with a build at that level. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so we got to, you know, set up the stance. I mean, literally set up everything. I mean, we, again, we cut the whole front of the, you know, frame off the thing and we did straight rails and did the, you know, straight axle, you know, trailer, trailer springs, all that so stuff. So, I mean, obviously you guys, you grew up around the hot rod stuff, talking about grandpa and dad and all that stuff. So did the owner of the car, was he on the same plane as you guys were? Or did he just say, make it where you think it's cool? I mean, how did that? He kind of basically just let us run free with it because I, I had worked on one prior at, at another at another buddy's shop, you know, so and I had Greg Peterson to kind of help me with it, you know, so it's like I had a general concept of like, you know, how to do straight rails and how to reinforce it. And I, I knew what, you know, what wall thickness and everything would work with it. And uh, and then generally like, you know, setting it up to where, you know, the front axles push forward just a little bit, you know, it's like there's there's a little bit of science to, you know, to getting gassers to look, look right, you know, not to say we know yeah. everything, but it's like, this is just kind of, you know, again, trying to, like Chip says, trying to knock the ugly out of it, you know, so, mm-hmm. so you just, you know, kind of keep tweaking things and like, well, obviously we still, you still have to pay homage to the past, of course, you know, and, and, you know, you want to look like, you know, a gasser from, from back then, but you still want to do like, and, but you don't want to over modernize it either, you know, so things like, Everybody usually does like a tube bumper on the front. You know, they take the, they remove the front bumper and then they'll actually do like a tube in between the straight rails. Well, the front end of those 55s, they're all, they're arched. And so we're like, well, I'll roll a piece of tubing, you know, to follow that arch, you know. And even the, the frame horns were even angled just a little bit to match that flow, you know. So it just doesn't like, nothing, st- you know, sticks out, you know, it just all, you know, flows together so nicely, you know, but you're not trying to make it look like a now, Riddler car. Okay, sorry. now is this stuff you guys would compare notes with? You'd stand there together and Yeah, going, exactly. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. We, it's like, well, yeah, yeah. okay, what about yeah. this so, and this and... Yeah, there's definitely a lot of bouncing ideas and, and you, you don't look like you're really doing anything productive, but you kind of sit there and you stare at something and you stare at it and stare at it and you're like, something's just not right here, something over here. And that's when it comes in handy to have a very like-minded individual standing next to you and be like, oh, okay, I see it. Now, now, now we know how to kind of attack it and how to, how to address it. So it, and, it, it's nice having that other person next to you. And it is actually like between the two of us, like it's, it's one's a left brain, one's a right brain. You know? So we, we view things from different angles, you know, so it's actually really good. Yeah, That's exactly. So it's like, you're, it's never linear. It's like, well, you can do look at it like this, or you can look at it like this and like, yeah, I like your idea better anyways, you know? And, right. And like, even like, you know, like the front body mounts on, on tri fives are real ugly, you know? So most people just like box them in or they'll just, you know, put like double die plates on or whatever. I'm like, yeah, but you never want things that when you fabricate to look like you carved it out of a block of cheese. And that's what, that's the biggest thing so, I related to. So which one do you use the artist? Both are really. Well, you're talking yeah. about brain, right brain. One of you guys got to be more of an artist than the other one. That's, that's I mean, part he's, of that. He's painted stuff. Yeah. More than I, I have, guess I'm so. slightly more creative yeah, in okay. that aspect. Like he, he's extrovert. I'm introvert. And okay. yeah, it's just, you know, we're, we're, I always tell people we're very much the same and very, very different all at the same time. So it's, it's a very strange dynamic but it works out well for us. That 55 was definitely a a big project for us to really be able to just like, you know, really cut loose and just do as much, you know, cool things all over the place. But still, again, you can't go way too overboard, you know, on on a gas or because- it was a fun thing to do together. Yeah, yeah. Together, let's take a project Right, exactly. And then obviously having a lot of people be part of it, you know, to, to push it across the finish line, you know, as far as, you know, engine and, you know, finish work and all that stuff. You know, obviously that that helps. I mean, it, it was definitely a, a team effort. We were just in charge of doing, you know, the metal work and, and a lot of the, you know, designing of the metal work and stuff yeah, like and that. That was like know. my first intro to really doing all sorts of different fab because, like I said, it was our first project start to finish. So I got to do chassis. I got to do sheet metal. I got to build. I guess that was my second set of headers on it and all sorts of different stuff. So it, it was a very, I don't know. I don't know. It was a very iconic car for us personally, just because we got to work together and I got to learn a lot and it was my stepping stone into the industry really.
You guys have been very fortunate. You've worked on some really cool projects. Yeah, no, years. definitely. And and uh, being able to do the metal work, you know, kind of being like the first first you know b- basement floor to you know you know being able to have so many different artisans actually help c- push it across the finish line. That's that's the key to all this stuff. It's like you know one one man can do it. It'll just, it'll just take him an entire lifetime. You know, sometimes. So it's like being I'm, able. To- I'm laughing at this because you guys are starting when you're starting the projects. You're at the beginning phases. Right. We're cutting this up. We're doing yeah. this. Yesterday, I'm the guy going. The paint is wet. Yeah. When you take that to show, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. It's wet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't touch this and this and yeah. this. It is literally. I just clean yeah. the brush out. It's wet. Don't touch it. Yeah. So I, I laugh because guys are like, "Well, where are you at?" It's like I'm usually the last guy to touch the car right. Right. It's before it's getting rolled off. Yeah. It's it's on me. Yeah. So. I always feel bad for the painters and the interior guys. Like, well, you <laughs> by, got, the way. by the way, we got to get it done like um, ASAFP and like yesterday. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully, uh, hopefully the wife's not expecting you home because yeah. you're not going home. Yeah, right? exactly. So, but again, you know, we all, we all, you know, obviously are just so used to it by now. It's like, uh, all right, here we go. It's show season again. So here we go. You try and like get ahead of the train a little bit, you know, when you're like, when you know who you're going to work for, like, okay. What schedule are you on? Where are we at? You know, you try and keep up with these bills just to make sure, like, hopefully you can get, you know, have a little bit of time slot, not like a yeah, little. see you guys with the beginning, so it doesn't matter. It's like, we're going to chop this all up. <laughs> right. As long as we can get it within a couple of weeks, everybody else, that's a right. rush. We, yeah. can, we can drag it out. Yeah, so. yeah and I'm sure I'll be uh, having a little sample of that next year. So I'll have the a 32 Phaeton possibly going for Amber. Oh. <laughs> AMBR. Oh, AMBR. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, possibly even a Nomad for Sloniker, but I don't know if we'll get both done. But either way, uh, we'll, we'll see what ends up happening. Next year, this next year should be pretty exciting. Hopefully your wagon's running next year. Hopefully. We'll Good see. That. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my goal was to have it running this last summer. Didn't quite make it. So hopefully this time around. We'll see. <laughs> I know it's a busy weekend and. Thank you for thank you for sitting down and doing this. I know you flew out here, and it's it's a big weekend for all of us <laughs> going to Grand National, and we get to go hang out there. And, but uh, thanks for sitting down and, and, and doing this with me. I've been talking to you guys for a while. And, yeah, well, for a long time, I've been talking to you guys about doing this. I know. Like, we, where are we going to do this? I know. At? You know, I didn't know we we're going to do some in this amazing place. Yeah. That's like a meat locker in here right now. <laughs> but uh, it's it's. <laughs> this is a, this is another one of our uh, like Forrest Gump stories. This is the top secret location that it's like yeah. uh, wow. top secret location so, with a lot of cool stuff that this customer has entrusted us with yeah, fabricating. That's, that's, yeah. you guys have done a wonderful <laughs> so we've done, job, absolutely wonderful job. With it. Yeah, we did. We done, We've done a lot of lot of fabrication here. So again, it surpasses you know as far as like what vehicles what are working on. It's yeah, like we fabricate another, another one of these things. You yeah. just get to be involved in. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes take it for granted. It's like, right. hey, I'm gonna work on this and this and right. Blah, blah. It's like it's all just metal. Like yeah, you know, we put these bookshelves and like the you know a lot of a lot of the neon sign restorations. It's like they're just metal boxes with with fancy lighting on them. So it's like we've done a lot That's of cool. the, you know the stuff you know fabrication in here. So mm-hmm. just being uh, being able to be part of that, have the, the customers that we get to that we get to you know become friends with is just. That's literally the best part of this whole thing, and you know, you get to know these people and you know hear their story, you know, just for, for this exact reason, and uh, and be around it. It's just like it's that's that's what makes it all worthwhile. It really is. Well, thank you guys yeah. very much. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thanks, Brad. Thank uh, you. 